Hello, uh, everyone. Welcome to a new uh, webinar. Uh, this time we're talking about into alarm insulation. This is going to be a basic webinar, which is going to explain you how to install a basic system. And when I say basic, I'm talking about a DIY kit or grade one. I'm not necessarily talking about grade two or grade three system. Hi again, uh, this is Ferdinand from Cube Training. A um, little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a passionate, I'm, I'm very passionate about helping people, uh, especially um, electronic security professionals. Experience in electronic security products like intruder alarm, CCTV, access control, and fire. I'm also a principal tutor at Cube Training. Um, I have a MSc in Information Management, a Bachelor in Information System. I'm also an internal verifier for NCFV Customized Awards at Cube. So, introduction to Intruder Alarm System. As I explained to you before, this is a short webinar for people who are looking to start a new career in Intruder Alarm installation and also for those who are looking to gain more understanding about the technical side of intruder alarm installation. What are we gonna to cover today? We'll be looking at a simple intruder alarm system. I have selected Honeywell Center G4 panel, also a Texacom uh, Premier 4 24 panel. How intruder alarm system work, how to wire different types of at alarm detectors to a great one panel. As I explained to you before, uh, the webinar is, I'm not looking to cover any grade two or grade three system. So I'm looking at grade one and DIY kits. We'll be attending this webinar. This webinar is for non-technical people, uh, people like sales uh, people who are involved in selling into the alarm system or people who wants to start a new career in into the alarm installation perhaps you you're already uh, in, in a different career and you want to expand your business and you want to understand the basic of into the alarm installation and this webinar will give you a strong foundation of how an into the alarm system work So let's go, let's start the uh, webinar without any further delay. Introduction to Intruder Alarm Installations, and this is our website, um, www.cctvdvrsystem.co.uk. So if you are looking to get more information about what we do, um, you can probably go to our website and you'll find more details about what we do and how we, you can contact us. And this is our location. This is where our office is based um, at Thames Innovation Center, Edith Kent, United Kingdom. And that's our telephone number and the website. So let's start. What is an internal alarm system? And most of you may have some idea about an intruder alarm system. You might have installed one or you might have one at your house. So let's look at how an intruder alarm system works. An intruder alarm system prevents unauthorized access. It alerts the relevant people during an unauthorized access. So it's not, not only preventing an unauthorized access, also it sends a signal out. So let's look at an overview of what an intro alarm system can give you. So once you armed an intro alarm system, so it has two status. It can be armed, it can be set or unset. So when you leave the property, you will set the alarm system. So we call it armed. So once it's armed, if someone enters the properties or if someone tries to enter the property, it then sends a signal out to you. Now, this is a basic system 
where you get a text message or phone call as one speech dialer, which then alerts you of an unauthorized access. Now, in a similar way, you could also connect you into alarm system to what we call ARC. This is in UK, we, we call it ARC um, and a different part of the world. It might be also referred as a central monitoring station. Now what they do, they take the signal and then verify the signal. They want to make sure it's not a false alarm. It's not something like you left your uh, pet inside a room and he's running around. So they, they will make sure this is a genuine intruder alarm signal. And then they also verify whether that signal is related to fire, medical, or police response. Then they would advise the right uh, relevant parties about the signal. So it can, if, if, it's, if there's a fire, then it would then signal will then fire, go to fire brigades. If, if it's a medical condition required, then it will go to the medical. And if it's, uh, if it's something like the police response required, then it will go to a police officer. So the components of an intro alarm system. So before we start um, understanding how to wire a system, we should know what are the basic components that you find in an intro alarm system. So let's look at the components of an intro alarm system. To begin with, brain. The brain of the system is what we call control panel. So all other components are connected to a control panel. So devices such as detectors, output, communication units, batteries, mains, everything is connected to a control panel. The control panel pretty much control the whole operation of an interior alarm system. A control panel is a printed circuit board. So it's a printed circuit board which has an inbuilt microchip. Which, been, which will then have the program from the manufacturer. So the control panel, as I said before, can be compared with human brain, which then control human brain is, is a vital organ which controls all other organs and other activities in a human. And in a similar way, the control panel controls everything. Now, in two alarm system has other components. Uh, for example, it's got deductors, um, it's got keypads, it's got communication device, it also has output uh, and so on. So let's start looking at the first one, which is keypad. Keypad is a control medium that allows you to program a control panel. So it's pretty much like an interface for the control panel. Now, keypad can be used to program the control panel also, you could use a computer or laptop. It depends on how you're going to control the panel. Now, if you want to program an intro alarm system, not, you don't necessarily have to use a keypad. You could use a laptop, but you need to have the software. So you could connect to COM port or, you know, or also you can program it remotely. But keypad is the most common device that we use to control the control panel. And also the users should have the keypad so they could add users, delete users. And if anything happened, they could go and view the system lock and so on. So it all can be done via keypads. So keypad should be connected to the panel. Then you have outputs. Um, there are many outputs in the intro alarm system. The common ones are bell and siren, also known as SCB and SAB. What are the common outputs? Um, you, you all have, um, let's move to a different types of components in the intro alarm system, um, detectors. Now, when it comes to detectors, you, you could get different types of detectors. You get door contacts, you get PARs, or known as passive infrareds. You get panic alarms, smoke detectors, uh, you get glass, break glass, and, and so many different types of detectors out there. You need to first establish what that place require and what type of 
protection the place would require, then select the right type of detectors to be used. What detectors do, they normally send a signal to the control panel when they've been activated. Power supplies. There are two forms of power supply to a control panel. One is main, so it's connected to your main power. Then the second one is your secondary power supply or known as backup power supply. In most cases, come from a battery. So it's a lithium rechargeable battery, not a dry cell battery. Communication units. Now there are different types of communication units you find in into alarm system. Um, for example, you have speech dialers. So when an alarm is triggered, the speech dialer will then talk to the person and tell the person what triggers triggered the alarm. Also, you have different types of communication units such as red care, dual com, wet way, and so on. Expanders and remote input and output devices. Now, expanders are used when you want to wire more zones into an into the alarm system. If you only have a panel which can physically allow you to wire eight zones, but the program itself gives you, for example, let's say um, 24 zones. So how do you then wire the rest of the zone? You need to then connect an expander to your control panel and start wiring your detectors to the expander. So this is what expander, uh, this is where you use an expander. Uh, wiring expander is very much similar to a keypad. So I'm gonna explain how uh, the wiring works, also how a control panels looks like. What I have here is a Texacom panel, Texacom 24, Premier 24, which is a grade two panel. Um, and here I'm gonna explain to you all these terminals. To begin with, that's your AC, that's your main power supply, Earth, and you have the live and neutral. Then you have your battery, which then will be connected to your battery source so that when there is no main power present, the battery will keep the system running for a certain period of time. Then you have your SAB connection or known as bell connection. You've got strobe, zero volt, tamper, bell, plus and minus. So that will be then connected to your bell. Number five, you have what we call network connection, um, which keypad is another network device uh, which sends and receive data to control panels. So keypad will be connected to these terminals. But as I mentioned to you before, if you're connecting expander, that will be also connected to the same terminals. So you have T, R, T, T represent transmitted, R represent received. So data transmitted, data received, and plus and minus. Then you got speaker, trigger one, auxiliary, where you get the power. Speaker is where you can connect the speaker so that the alarm receiving center can make a two-way communication. Auxiliary tamper, so that's a tamper circuit. And this is where you find all the zones. So zone one, zone two, zone three. So as I've said to you before, there are eight zones here, but the system allows you to go up to 24 zones. So if you ever want to connect more zones, say 16 zones, then you have to use expander, which then, be, then will be connected to the network here. Uh, com com um, interface, you have COM2, which you could connect it to a laptop then the laptop can be used to program this panel. So that's the COM uh, interface. Um, then you've got uh, DC plus, DC minus, uh, L, uh, left and right. This is basically if you connect a communication device, then you could get the power from DC plus and minus. And DG output, one to eight. And um, this one is a 24 panel, so there's only one to six output there. These outputs can be programmed for different options. As default, it, the one is normally programmed as fire, then panic alarm for the second one, then the third one is confirm signal or into the alarm. So, but you could change this. 
in uh, if you go to the programming of this this panel slow default uh, which allows you to in case if you make a mistake if you're not really sure um, and if you want to set everything to factor default setting then you could go to uh, load default uh, mode and these are the fuses that you get from one for battery one for bell and, and auxiliary and network so let's move to the next one so here i explained uh, the numbers and what they what those terminals are uh, supposed to do. So let's see how to connect an intro alarm. The very first thing you do is you connect the intro alarm to the main power supply. So main power supply in the UK and the and, and or most of the European countries, we follow the same standard. And um, so we use for neutral, positive, uh, negative, and then earth. So the positive side of it, uh, for life, we call it, we use brown, and the neutral or the negative side, we use uh, blue, and then we have earth, which is yellow and green. And this side would then go to the trans transformer. And normally with it, it fitted with a fuse um, for, for the protection of uh, the PCB. Once it's done, then you have to do the battery. So you find a battery terminal there, which I explained to you in the previous slide where the battery terminal is. Um, you have plus and minus that will be then connected to a battery. Um, we normally use seven m battery, but then it depends on your load. Um, if if it's uh, if you you can go up to seventeen amp battery uh, if you want uh, the intruder alarm system for a certain period of time. Then you have to calculate the load, and that would then tell you what size battery to use. Uh, but 7 amp batteries in, in general will sort of uh, support any small system. Since we are looking at a small system, 7 amp battery is more than enough. How to wire a keypad? Let's look how to wire a keypad here. Okay. Before connecting a keypad, you've got to isolate all the power for the control panel. That's include main and battery. Keypad is normally wired to the network terminals, um, but the easiest part about keypad you can't use a one brand keypad to another brand. So it's got to be the same brand. So whatever they say on the keypad, you just follow that in the, in the control panel. For example, if it's a Galaxy, they normally call it plus and minus A and B. So if you find A and B in the control panel, you just connect A with A, B with B, and plus and minus auxiliary. And if you take Texacom, they call T and R plus and minus, so T with T, R with R, and plus and, and minus. So I've got the Texacom here. Uh, I've got the plus minus for the power and data transmitted, data received. So if you look at it, you can now see how it's wired to the control panel. So control panel you find where it's called network, and that's those are the terminals that you'll be using to wire a keypad. Now that this is with Texacom, but if you go to Honeywell, you would then find it different. But then again, whatever they say on the control panel, you would find the same abbreviation that you use with the keypad. So this is Honeywell. Um, instead of saying T and R, they, they're calling it A and B, yeah? You could see that, A and B. And the control panel, it would then say A and B. So it's not that difficult, right, to wire A with A and B with B. So let's start with detector side. And uh, the most common detector that we use is the dual contact or magnetic contact. It works via magnetic uh, relays, hence we call it uh, dual contacts or mag magnetic contacts. So normally you would um, fix them to the edge of your um, door frame. Now it depends on what type of door frame that you're working with. If it's uh, timber then obviously you could use the flash mount, flash uh, mounted one but if it's um, a double glazing or a metal uh, frame then you, perhaps you it would be better to use a surface mount so you normally put your magnet part to the moving part of the door so that's where the magnet part goes and then the main body of the magnet uh, door contact would be then 
um, connected or fixed with a door frame. And then you normally run the cable along the frame. Uh, along the frame. So what makes a door contact work? It's a relay inside door contact. Now it applies to a wired and wireless system. It's a simple relay which has been magnetized. So when the magnet comes close to it, the relay is always close. You can see that two uh, wires here in a, in a glass fuse. When the magnet is taken apart from it, then it breaks. So it's, a, it's a normally close. And in to the alarm system, the basic uh, door contacts, I have a door contact here. So you can now see that um, this is how it looks like. We call them terminals. The first and the last one is your relay, which is then connect, will be then connected to your zone. Then the second and the third one, which is connected to this switch here. This is a tamper switch. So if someone tries to take the door contact from the frame, the tamper switch will, um, switch will go off then that would break the tamper circuit, uh, which then sends a signal back to the um, control panel. That's a spare one. So I'm just going to do a small wiring here, connect yellow and blue wires. Now, there is no such a standard saying what colors that you should be using. But I would just keep red and black for plus, uh, plus and minus power. And then I'll use um, yellow and blue for relay. So what we're doing here is we're doing like a double pole system. Um, so double polling is basically you run two circuits 